And welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly neighborhood TV show all about premium cigars. That's yes, sir. Yes, and sir. Happy almost Thanksgiving. Eve. Almost. Thanksgiving Eve. That is correct. In five short hours. Shocking that we are at the tail end of November. Yeah. Today's my brother's birthday. Shout out to my brother. Happy birthday, Happy John. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, Robert's brother. John. 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 Yep. He was named that because of uh, John F. Kennedy. Really? Because he was born three minutes after Kennedy was assassinated. Well, shot. I don't know when he died, but... Shortly there. there. Shortly there. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to be that precise. No. But they named my brother John Fitzgerald, which he hates. <laughs> <laughs> As a middle name? As a middle name. Yeah. So he wasn't a suspect. He was not a suspect. <laughs> he has an alibi. He was on the, was on the grassy knoll <laughs> in a <laughs> diaper. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just saying. That would be interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but happy yeah, birthday, Jack. Thank you, my mouth, yeah. <laughs> So, you know wrong. that there are probably many younger generations of folks who, if you said the guy on the grassy knoll, would have no uh, idea yeah. what you were talking about. That's quite possible. What did you say? Have I ever met your brother? I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. I did. Yeah. The party at your parents' yeah. house? Yeah, for me. Yeah. For my birthday. Mm -hmm. 50th birthday, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Way back when. Way back when, exactly. 11 years ago. So we're smoking an interesting cigar today. We are. It's from uh, Drew Estate. It's are called the M81. Right. It's a it's a collaboration with a collaboration. That is correct. Because it's called the Blackened. Blackened is the name of a whiskey that was a collaboration between Metallica and the whiskey industry. Mm -hmm. And they came up with this blackened whiskey, which they age by playing Metallica music at very low frequency levels to vibrate, to vibrate the barrels. Yeah. If they were open like that. No. <laughs> Did they all play Metallica? Yeah, yeah. and that's no? that's why Some the, play the carpenters. That's why different bourbons <laughs> taste different. They play different music. The gentleman Jack uses those the carpenters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's so smooth. <laughs> no, yeah. They, they so say because it 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 goes it deep it deepens their it seeps deeper into the into the barrel, mm -hmm. and gets a, a totally different taste, it more of an more oaky, oaky, oaky taste. taste. Yeah, yeah. Muscular and they plant. they age it in. Well, the one I was reading about was uh, in um, white sherry casks. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, from a a backstory standpoint, it's interesting. But actually, from a blend standpoint, it's also really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's totally Maduro. Uh, wrapper, binder, and filler. Does that make it a Puro? No. A Puro Maduro? No, because I it does. it's Maduro leaf from four different places. I believe but it's, it does. But it's, he's saying, is it a pure Maduro? There's no such thing as a Puro Maduro as a phrase. Is. I think that there is. I think we should initiate that phrase for this cigar. Yes. It's a Puro Maduro. Although, with the Camacho... Triple Maduro? I don't know. Is the filler all Maduro? I don't know if it's all Maduro. I don't think it is. This cigar is 100% Maduro. The wrapper is uh, Mexican San Andres Maduro. Mm -hmm. uh, the binder is Pennsylvania, no, uh, Connecticut Broadleaf mm -hmm. Maduro. And the filler is a combination of Pennsylvania Broadleaf Maduro and Nicaraguan I think Maduro. You can stop saying Maduro. And Nicaraguan <laughs> Maduro. <laughs> okay. Last time. Okay. Uh, so, I guess our expectations would be mellow, sweet, and rich. But that's just an expectation. We won't know until hey, Rob, we speak. Why mellow? <coughs> you have to excuse me. He's full of Maduro. Yeah, he's full of Maduro. <laughs> is right. Paul, why would you think it would be mellow? I would think it would be more, st I would think it would be stronger, with, especially with the, well, the, I find PA41 a little bit stronger. Um, it can be a little bit stronger, and the fact that there are two different broad leaves in it is likely to make it kind of metallic. Did you just say there are two broads in it? There broad are two broads in this cigar. <laughs> one broad from Pennsylvania and one broad <laughs> from Connecticut. You, you have to excuse him. He's 
Got a head cold, so he's having problem hearing stuff here. So you wouldn't necessarily expect the Maduro to be stronger. And I say mellow because the flavors tend to be rich but not sharp. No, not not because it's Maduro, but because of the, the well, the Nicaragua. I mean, yeah, I guess it depends on if it's where's the, where the is from, how strong the Lajaro is, top of the plant, first priming, second priming. All of that. All that. That's why there's 400 million blends. But that is correct. Although they haven't produced 400 million different plants. Yeah, 400 but million possible. Possible. I bet you it's more than that. Well, I just, actually no. I just got a, an email from somebody who has a cigar made from Haitian tobacco. Or Hadian, if you prefer. Haitian. You prefer that over Hadian? Yes. Ha okay. Haiti, Haiti? Yeah, it's from, it's from Haitian. Because it's not Hades. It doesn't come from hell. It's Haiti with a T. So it's Haitian, not Hadian. There's no D in there anywhere. I didn't say anything about a D. I didn't hear the D either. Haitian. Okay. He said Hadian. Haitian, yeah. Haitian. Well, there's no sh in it either. Where's the S H? Anyway. T I. Yeah. Um. Really? Yeah. Haitian tobacco. Yeah. Well. Matter of fact, I emailed him back. I was like, sure, send me some samples. Let's see what's doing. It stands to reason if you think about how much tobacco is grown in the Dominican Republic, and right. Haiti is the same island. It's the same mm. island, yeah. I mean, Why the, wouldn't it? The dividing line is just a border made up by people. It's not different on one side of the border yeah. or the other side. Well, it could be, but not be. But, I mean, you talk to Nick, and there's a, you know, you get in the same field you can get two completely different tobaccos because of the, the nutrients and one has a you know all the sediment from this from the river goes on right. one side well, and yeah. doesn't go to the other so but it's not because it's two different it could be different but not because it's two different countries right and probably the tobacco growing area of uh, the Dominican Republic and whatever area they're trying to grow tobacco in in Haiti are pretty far apart so they're not likely to share a lot as far as terroir, even though they're on the same island. Mm. Good for them for trying, I guess. Well, well it's like it's there, are, there are some interesting countries doing tobacco now. There's Zimbabwe in Africa. Mm. There's uh, Haiti has been fiddling for a few years. I didn't know they had any crops far enough along to actually produce a cigar yet. Uh, I'll let you know how it is. There's a fair samples. amount of cigar tobacco now being grown in China. Although there's still only one brand made in China that's imported to the U.S., and that's called Great Wall. Mm. Really? Yeah. I've had, I, uh, my, my father was in China, and he brought back cigars, Chinese cigars. Yeah. And they there's were god-awful. But I'm sure they were. Early, early production cigars in countries that aren't used to growing or making them uh, is a tough slog. I mean, they make cigars in India where they've been making them for a few hundred years, but they don't really understand cigar tobacco there. And the tobacco region that they grow in, it's called, well, it's something I can't pronounce in Hindi, but they call it Triki for short. And mm -hmm. treaky tobacco is about the worst stuff in the world. So Indian then why made do they cigars. Keep making it? Well, because they have a billion people, so somebody's smoking a they lot. They gotta smoke something. Somebody That's their version of the lone wolf. <laughs> 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 I like that. That's good. I like lone wolf. <laughs> the original lone wolf, not the one out of four people. Not, not the nine. <laughs> The original, not the what? The original, not the knockoff stuff. The the, p the people who bought the name, ah. and then they started producing oh, you mean, those. You mean, you mean you liked it back in the Jim Belushi? Jim Belushi, and, Chuck uh, Norris Chuck days. Norris day. Yeah, yeah. It was a good cigar. Well, you're not going against Chuck Norris. Be crazy. Yeah, that would just be stupid. Suicide. So, but um, by the same. Uh, Going what you were talking about earlier, um, same island, different tobacco. C 
Cuba is the same way. I mean, on the western side, they grow all the good in the Pinar regions. Pinar they, Rio, the Rio. And, uh, they they Walter have great, yeah. but on the other side, where the you know where our air base is and stuff like that, or not the air base, but our base is, not so much. They grow some tobacco on the other side. It's called uh, Spiritu Sancti, is the region. Okay. Um, it's not as good. They use it mostly for filler and blending. Right. Uh, the good stuff comes from Pinar del Rio and Vuelta Abajo. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever had any of the cigars made by the, th they're made in Cuba, they're made by just Cuban residents um, that are allowed to you know, farm their own tobacco? And th oh, you, that you mean the, the farm, they call them farm cigars? Yeah, is that what, I didn't know there was a technical term for it. Some of them are actually pretty good. Well, if, if you start on the basis of decent or better Cuban tobacco, even if it's not a brand name, just somebody rolling it in their house, it's but likely uh, to taste pretty good. I don't know how good that, I mean, it's tobacco, they, I guess they grew on their own private farm. So Well, it's, it's, not, it's not even farms. A few years ago, because demand for Cuban cigars was so high and the amount of arable land was right. already used up, <coughs> the government initiated a program where they would pay people that owned a little bit of land or even uh, a nice sized property around their house. They would pay them to grow cigar tobacco, like in their backyard, basically. That's pretty cool. And well, they grow it themselves, or the, or the Cuban government went there and farmed it? And all no, that? They, there would, is a difference. they would grow it themselves with oh. instruction from the Cuban government. You know, oh, a well, written piece of paper, that's all you need. <laughs> no, they'd send an agronomist guys out to well tell you what to do. Guys don't read instruction. No, I don't. <laughs> Not exactly, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> but that would be interesting, though. These farm, farm rolled, I will call them farm rolled, because uh, that, that does sound familiar. They're actually, they're, they're decent cigars. They're, mm. they're okay. They used to call farm rolled the cigars that were literally rolled out in the big commercial farms, there would be some rollers out there fiddling with the tobacco and growing some, and those were called farm roll. It's kind of what I pictured, you know. Uh, but Alejandro Robania back in the day, just sitting out there, was like, hey, let's yeah, make a cigar. Yeah, that's more or less the way it was. Hmm. I don't know how that where that came up, but oh, that's I wanted to it, I wanted to ask you. So there's the Pinar de Rio, the. <laughs> Um, Vuelta Abajo. <laughs> says you. <laughs> what, are, what other growing regions are there? Spiritu Sancti. What about Tamboril? Oh, wait a minute. That's no, the Dominican, Tamboril that's is the in Dominican, the Dominican Republic. Republic. Camagüey? That's not what I was thinking. Camagüey? Are there any other growing regions? Mm -hmm. I mean, not no major, other, but... No other significant ones, no. Except Camagüey? Fred's Backyard. Yeah. Fred's Backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his name's not really Fred. Frederico. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Don <laughs> Frederico's Backyard Fer Cigar. Fernando. <laughs> Fernando's even better. I guess you could tech, you could grow tobacco pretty much anywhere. It's how good it's going to be. Yeah, right. I mean, who knows? I could grow up my backyard. It could be better than Cuban, but... It could be. We're well, never, we'll never that's find like out. that crazy guy <laughs> that proposed an idea of going around the country to the right of ways, or rights of way, where the high tension power lines are. Yeah, yeah. And there's miles of empty land with just power lines, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Why not grow tobacco there? There's we'll a it the same it's it's <laughs> it's useless land. For all, the same all it's there is to put the tower up and have access to it. Probably for the same reason they don't have to build houses there either. It's not good for you. Well, we don't know how it would be for a tobacco plant. But there are laws. Until you walked into the field and the plant grabbed you and said, Give me a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like well, listen, commercial. if you could grow tobacco that did that, <laughs> you'd be you might have something. There are laws saying how close you can live to those tension wires. Well, that's because the electricity or the magnetic fields are not good for people. I don't know if they're good or not good for plants. I don't know. You Who might knows? you might have a whole different kind of <laughs> electric tobacco. Are they not good tobacco. for people or are they just like, you know, let's not test this out? I don't know. Good question. Mm. Yeah, sad. yeah. It, it could it could grow in like three days. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and 
and have more <laughs> leaves or yeah, fewer exactly. bamboo. Exactly. Or I be eyeballs up on the top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it's it's not radiation. It's just an electromagnetic field. I have a project for you, Paul. You could they could make make you a millionaire. Crossbreed, maybe a billionaire, crossbreed tobacco with bamboo at the rate it grows. You might be able to tobacco you have a whole crack whole crop of to tobacco in weeks. I can be able to roll it. You but, but weeks, days. You basically have a whole crop of tobacco in 90 days anyway. Well, I want it in nine days, so there you go. I don't it's think it's ten, ten, ten times You can make ten times as many cigars. <laughs> now, and, from what I understand And is bamboo is a ba highly invasive species yeah. that takes over everything, so you'd wind up with a bamboo forest instead of a tobacco farm. A friend of mine uh, was, he was, he said he would cut it down, and he said you could, you could almost see it growing. That's how he said he would grow. He would cut it all down, and the next day it would be a foot high. That's crazy. Yeah. The only thing that grows faster right, than bamboo is kudzu, and kudzu grows like crazy. That's a crazy vine in Texas. Well, all over the South now, yeah. and it, and it yeah. was brought in by accident. Yeah. Yeah. They should even cigar that. Kudzu? I yeah. think somebody did that. Really? Yeah, stop. <laughs> now you're making a joke, and you know that Alec Bradley has already done that. Not Alec Bradley. No, Southern I would think it'd be more like Southern Kudzu. Draw. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's Alec Bradley Kinsu. made Kintsugi, Kintsugi that's and that's is. not a vine that grows in the South. <laughs> Where does it grow? I don't think it's a vine. It's like a or masaki or something? He actually was saying Kintsugi, but he just got misspelled on the labeling, so they called it yeah. Kintsugi. Yeah, they were coming in at Ellis well, right, Island and somebody way. sneezed right in and in said, Kintsugi. Absolutely <laughs> not. So let's get our first impressions. Mr. Moose. There's only one thing that would make this better. What's that? A glass of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> A glass of bourbon makes it's anything better. better. If you were watching the original Superman, <laughs> what would make it better? Somebody a glass uh, of bourbon. <laughs> somebody, well, that would work. <laughs> that, that, that would be a start. That would be a start. I had another idea. Nicole, I, 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 uh, then what's her name? Uh, well, the original being the one with uh, Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> I the know one with not. Richard Pryor. I know what? it's not, but that's in my head. There was the one with uh, Gene Hackman and Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor is in the third one. Okay, well, then not that, that one. The one with Gene Hackman. <laughs> I'm sure there was a movie. Reeves. Was there a mo Superman movie before that? Yes, it was Keanu Reeves, wasn't it? Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Keanu Reeves. No, not Keanu Reeves. Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves. <laughs> Which is so ironic since the guy who played him on the old <laughs> TV, TV show was George, George Reeves. George Reeves. Yeah. But was there a movie before the Keanu Reeves one? <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Okay, yeah, it was the called TV jo show. It was, it was called TV. John Wick Negative One. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. It was Everybody just a TV calm show. Down. Then Christopher Reeves did the movies. With Gene Hackman. With Gene Hackman. And, um, he played Lex Luthor. And uh, the guy from... Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty. The guy from Ned Beatty. Yeah. He played... He played his sidekick. I forget he'd his name. walk around saying, Mr. Luthor. Mr. Mr. Luthor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harvard, uh, but yeah. How do we get on uh, yeah, You know, <laughs> when, <laughs> when George Reeves was playing Superman... George on, Reeves. On TV. TV. His brother was in an even more successful series called The Sons of Hercules, and he played Hercules. His uncle coached the, Cal uh, the Broncos. Dan. <laughs> Dan, Dan Reeves. Reeves. <laughs> Moose, how did you, <laughs> what else did you say <laughs> about the cigar? Yeah, we didn't get past the glass of bourbon. Yeah, we didn't get, get, get past that. Um, wow, considering all the Maduro tobacco in this, it is rather smooth. I'm enjoying it. I don't. I'm finding it to be tasty. Paul? I find it to be about a one on the strength scale. Yeah. Um, it is mellow. I find it kind of earthy, but there was an incredible sweet note on the dry draw. Before I lit it up, it was intensely sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping a hint of that comes back. But right now, more than anything else, I'm getting uh -oh. earth. <coughs> Just a Bless you, uh, Scott. Uh, uh. Um, well. Can you taste anything? I don't know. Y yeah, I can. Um, I found it earthy, very vegetal. Um, again, back to those veggie straw things we were talking about once. It kind of yeah. reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, but as far as strength, 
I mean, this is, I mean, I'm, it's scratching the back of my throat. No, that's you. I think it's, yeah. That's your illness. No, 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 it's, it's not. It's from the, it's from the tobacco. Really? But yeah, it's, it's, it's hitting me back there for some reason. So, <coughs> I mean, I, I can I see where you might get that, but I, I'm not getting it. I would get, I would go with the three on the, the strength scale, maybe 3.5. Just based on that, I mean, it's yeah. not making me dizzy or anything, and, but. I, I would, I would agree more with Paul, maybe one and a half, but, but it's not full bodied at all. I don't mm -hmm. find it, it, not even close. Um, I'm getting the earthiness. Uh, I do get, for a, a, such a Maduro cigar, there's not much sweetness in this cigar. There was before it lit and then it went away. But through the retro hail there is. Yes. It's very sweet through the retro hail. I am getting somewhat of a creaminess and that's more of a mouth feel. Like, and maybe that's because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, my taste buds are affected, but I can still f like sense the tobacco across my, my palate. I enjoy this cigar more through the retro hail. Yeah, the retro hail is really it's complex. really, yeah. So I got some sweetness, I got a hint of pepper, and some kind of savory spice yeah. that I can't quite identify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it... On the retro. Yeah. So what else is going on? <laughs> How about them eagles? How about them? I suggest that next week we review the Perdomo 30th. I agree. I suspect yes. that would be a Stay perfect tuned. idea. Um, because we record the show a week ahead of time, yeah. um, this past Friday, the Perdomo 30th came out. Um, so you can look forward to us reviewing it on the, I mean, you'll be able to try it before we before the show, but. Yeah, um, they should be, well, we'll be getting them in. Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, did, did uh, Nick call you? Yeah. He I called him, me. too. He wasn't sure, he wasn't sure if he should call you or. Um, well, he called. He, he, he called, called here, here, so I spoke with him. Okay, cool. And he said two things: thanks for all the business you do with us, and just so you know, they're coming by Friday. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, there's five different sizes: the robusto, the epicure, which is a Toro, uh, the Corona Gorda, uh, the Churchill, and then there's also a torpedo. Um, <coughs> Which we'll only, I think we're only carrying the four. We're not gonna carry the torpedo, I don't think. I can't remember, no, I think we had to buy all of them. Yeah, I think it you was You had to a, buy all of them. The whole thing. If you were gonna get any, you had to buy all. Now, Joe, hmm? Joe the rep so. was anyway. here yesterday. Was he? And he said there are 12 facings of that product. Did he give you a, did he give you a uh, well, sample? Yeah. Of course not. Well, yeah, there's four four times three different wrappers. You talk about that's what they their whole, their whole their whole their whole model. Everything is sun grown Connecticut four, and four Medora. Four sizes, right. three blend, three wrappers. Right. Yeah, that is their whole business model. Right. Yes. But uh, again, I don't I don't think we had to order the torpedo. I think we did, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I know we got a ton of them, so yeah. I think, yeah. I think we got thirty boxes of each size and flavor. I think so, something like that. Cool. Yeah, I can't. So, I mean, yeah, we I, should have them. And I've, I've plenty of them. I know I have boxes that are already spoken for. Yeah. Guys are already like that. I've had guys call me for a week. You had it at the show, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it was really Connecticut. good. In Connecticut, it was fantastic. Nick Jr. sent us some. It was really good. So, yeah, I can't wait to. We'll, and we'll do that next week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so stay tuned. You can smoke along with us if, you, if you'd like. But they won't know. Oh, yes, they will, because they're going to see this first. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. You got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All figured out. So yeah, next yeah. Wednesday, plan on watching the show outside so you can smoke outside. Yeah, get your TV set up. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. Or watch us on your phone. Or, or, your or on your poop. iPad or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Bluetooth, you can sit out there and laugh along with us. We're just or laugh them. along at us. <laughs> I laugh at us. That's basically what it is. Yeah. What? No, they're Sorry. laughing and going like this. Like, yeah, shaking their head. <laughs> That's how you know somebody's watching our show. If they're going, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because now that I'm working in Quakertown a lot more, people come in and say, hey, you're the guy on TV. I'm like, yeah. 
I guess they watch it up there. Oh, well, it's a like lot. the like I told you when I was in King of Prussia. The guy from Canada showed up. Yeah. He'd recognize him from watching him on the uh, oh, on podcast or something there. On YouTube, yeah. On YouTube. <coughs> That's cool. Yes. We are international influencers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> considering tomorrow's Thanksgiving, that means Thursday or Friday is Black, Black Friday. Friday. What happens on Black Friday in the, the cool stores? A Maduro sale. Nope. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. A maybe Maduro that. sale for Black <laughs> Friday Maduro, makes good all sense. All Maduro cigars. Turkey Bowl. Turkey oh, Bowl. Oh, the Turkey Bowl is. Friday Black after Thanksgiving. Yeah, Black yeah. Friday. Black Friday. Are you gonna Are you gonna televise that? I wish I could, but I'll t definitely take videos. Take videos. Give it to Piz. Maybe he can uh, stream it. Some of the more it. Some of the more hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I have videos from all of them, man. That's do you really? I yeah, oh yeah. It's, you send them funny. to me. <laughs> They're very funny. It is hilarious. <laughs> I'll have I'll have some. Uh, Deals in Quaker Town on Black Friday. What are they? I don't know yet. I'll come up with something. Ten percent off all Maduros. Maybe something like that, but maybe four and ones. Ten percent off all the turkeys. Can we can guys <laughs> take advantage of the. Th that you know, tur uh, according to the news, turkeys have gotten about thirty percent cheaper per pound this year. Yeah. While all the other stuff was going up, <laughs> turkeys were going down. <laughs> Who is that? I think it's Dino. Stop Dino. <laughs> Say Dino. Um, <laughs> did you guys? I mean, I I I got a, a, quite a bit of takers on the Veterans Day special we have. I mean, it's the buy five get one free plus ten percent on top is mm -hmm. basically yeah, twenty seven percent off. Yeah, great deal for vets. Yeah, veterans, not veterinarians. Yeah, that's we should have a veterinarian veterinarian special. I don't think there's a Veterinarian's Day. No, there is. There's a some, there's a everything. Day. Everything. There's everybody. National Watch Day, probably. Veter veterinarians are on my bad list right now. Oh my God, they're really I bet you they're worried. No, they haven't been able to find out what's wrong with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I brought my dog, who's uh, the equivalent of 98 years old in dog years, so she's old. Uh, but I brought her into the vet, and all they did was look at her and take some blood. Yeah. Six hundred and seventy-five dollars. Holy crap! I wouldn't spend that much on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. And even though she's old, she can't get Medicare. No. <laughs> no. That's a shame. They do have insurance for dogs. AARP. Yeah. No AARP. She's a member. She's a member. <laughs> I signed her up for the free tote bag. I knew she would like it. <coughs> do you want to uh, back to the cigar for a second? If you guys don't mind. Um, do you know how many blends they went through? But anybody, do you? No, I don't, but I do know that they were working on it for two years. Um, and it was both, and also that, uh, was it Jonathan and Rob Dietrich? Yeah. Check about it. Yeah, Rob Dietrich and Jonathan have been friends for a long time. And Rob Dietrich is the master. Uh, the master well, distiller. Blender. No, no, he's the distiller. Master distiller, distiller. distiller. distiller yeah. for Black, and, and he, he worked for 15 years for another another company also. Uh, he but worked under Dave Pickerel, who was one of the absolute artists of bourbon making. Black and is a bourbon versus a whiskey. Is that correct, or is it a? Well, they have both. They, they have a, they have a whiskey and then they have a bourbon. Oh, okay, okay. And it's what all, proof is the cigar? Distilling. The one I there was a bunch of them, the, but the bourbon that I saw was 116 proof. What about the cigar? The cigar was zero proof. Okay, just check. It seems to be about one. Proof. Yeah, one proof. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, they worked on the. He thinks it's three. The, yeah. Well, he's a war. <coughs> yeah. They 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 went through countless numbers of blends and they spent like two years before they finally came up with the one that they really liked or the, the final cigar that they, they went with. That's encouraging to me that they spent two years, doesn't matter how many things they went through, that they spent that amount of time 
laboring over what combination of tobaccos to use. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, as opposed to these guys that run down to a factory for a couple of weeks and say they blended a cigar. Yeah, but right. it's I mean it's Jonathan Drew is this, you know he's not gonna he's not gonna put them out after you know. Four, four different iterations of it. Yeah. No, he's going to keep going until he thinks it's perfect. Yeah. Which is good. I, I like that. They're they're one of their bourbons. I don't even, I don't. It's it, you can't really call it a bourbon. It's a whiskey. They blend a bourbon, a rye, and a whiskey. Hmm. A, and was it something else? Did they put in? I forget. But they put that. In the they blended, they blended all of that all together yeah. and came up with something else. No kidding. Yeah. Actually, Ooh. there's a there's another Ryan. distiller. Um, where are they? I think they're in Colorado. Um, they make something called Campfire Whiskey, mm -hmm. and it's a combination of bourbon, rye, and uh, single malt, like Scotch, but without right. the peat. Right, hmm. and they blend all three of those together, and yeah. it's re it's really interesting. You probably use a Highland Scotch for that. I would think uh, Highland Scotch doesn't have the pee the, the it's pure water. Yeah. Do you guys like a bourbon or a rye better? I, I personally rye. I like it. It's a. I think it's a touch it, sweeter it for the most part. It honestly depends on the, the situation. Now, if I'm just sitting down and having a drink, I'm usually a Jack Daniels guy, as everybody knows. Get mm -hmm. out! Get out! But I also like my Watch. Irish whiskey. I like my Scotch. I, I, it depends on the mood, the situation, what I'm having for, for food, mm -hmm. a cigar. It really does. And you, you can pair a lot of stuff up with the cigars. There's a, a wide variety of things. No, will you we should do a show on that. Yeah, yeah, really. Oh, wait, we do. Moose, will you pair the whatever you're drinking with the cigar or with the cigar with whatever you're drinking? Which, which do you choose first? Depends on which I start first. Okay. If I start drinking first, then I want to have something to complement the drink. If I get it like this, like the first time I've had one. If I get this, oh, I like this. Wait a second. What I got something. I got something on the shelf. Yeah, this. This. I think this will go good. Then I'll have that, and I go, yeah, dead on. Because that's one. That's one of the questions we get a lot: is when they want to pair something, a cigar with, you know, a whiskey, or are are they comparing the whiskey with the cigar? And that's one of the questions we ask. Like, okay, which is the which is the focus? Is it the drink or the cigar? See, that's the fun part. I get to smoke two cigars and two different drinks. <laughs> or, or five, five cigars, cigars and five, five different, different drinks. drinks. <laughs> yeah, you, you get it. You, it. It takes some experimenting. Absolutely, and that's Beca the fun. And that's the fun part. Mm -hmm. Figuring out. Okay, I got a box of these. I'm going to find out what goes good with this. So you start working through. And I don't buy fists or half gallons of everything to try. I buy little, you know, pint bottles. And I pour a little glass of that, and I taste it. And Decide how to pair it. And decide how to pair it, or I already have the cigar lit, and I decide out of my collection of pints what I think might work with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I maybe once in a while find a good one that I buy a half gallon of it. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, can't take that approach because if I buy a bottle of <coughs> bourbon or whiskey or rye, it doesn't go on the shelf. It gets <laughs> drunk basically right away. <laughs> wow. Which do you prefer other than Jack Daniels? Tennessee whiskey. Which do you prefer? My next, well, my current next favorites would be uh, Dead Rabbit. It's an Irish whiskey. Yep. <coughs> and it is phenomenal with an Oliva. A really? Oliva uh, v, with an Oliva V. Phenomenal. Great they pair the, the great, they just, the orange vanilla flavor of the Dead Rabbit just goes great with uh, the Oliva V. Uh, the other one I like, and I've been drinking it for years, is called Famous Grouse. It's a scotch. Mm -hmm. Not peaty at all. Not peaty at all. It's a Highland scotch. You ever have, <coughs> excuse me, you ever tried Jameson orange? Orange? And orange? If I want orange, I'll put it in myself. Thank you. Well, you just said something that has an orange flavor. I wasn't sure if that was... No, that's, that, <coughs> that's, that's a peel note. <laughs> <laughs> no, a... a, a I, if I'm drinking Jamison, I'm just drinking the original. Um, that's a, what they call an, an island scotch. Uh, closer to the east west coast of uh, Ireland, along the sea. So it's got a bit of a salty, salt, salty taste to it because it is salt. Jamison is scotch? Irish whiskey, same thing. I mean, 
Scotch is from Scotland, Irish whiskey is from Ireland. But the I don't think it was a bourbon. I've had it. I like it. I thought it was more of a bourbon, but no, no. it's not bourbon no, at no all. Kidding. It's not bourbon. No, it's Irish it's whiskey. It's malt. It's just malt. It's not corn. It's not rye. Toasted it's, malt. It's toasted malt, not toasted with peat. Yeah. So the so the old English eight hundred is a malt. It is, and in <laughs> fact. <laughs> when when you're making whiskey, you can't drink the two of them together. When you're making whiskey, you make beer first. It might not be a tasty beer. It might not act like a normal beer, but you're fermenting a bunch of grain, and what you get, they the actually word. the distillers actually call it beer. Oh really? And then you distill that, and you get rid of all of the junk, and you wind up with mostly alcohol and a little bit of flavor. Or mostly and alcohol it, and, and a lot of flavor. Yeah. And it, it's always white before they uh, barrel it. Barrel I was actually going to ask that. It's yeah. actually almost every alcohol Everyone is, made white. is yeah. white until they barrel it. The barrel gives it its color. So the barrel really does matter what kind of barrel they put it in. Back in older times, like the 1800s, they didn't color it from the barrel. They actually added colorants to the whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, which would and also they change used, the flavor too. They would add all kinds of weird things to color it and preserve it. Uh, they would add tobacco sometimes to it to make it darker. They did all kinds of horrible things. Why did they want to? Why were they concerned with making it darker or coloring it? Because they, they didn't want everyone to think it was gin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think whiskey predates most of the other types of spirits, at least in Europe, mm -hmm. and... Actually, gin's right up there. Uh, gin is 1800s. Whiskey is older than that. 1500s, yeah. Um, but I think they wanted to distinguish. I think it was more about the flavor impact and the color was sort of a side benefit. Mm. Which for first, beer or whiskey? Beer. The, they have proof it's the Egyptians single process it. instead of two. So and, and wine. Someone had to come oh. up with the idea of distilling before they could produce a whiskey, but they would have to have <coughs> done fermenting and distilling. Fermenting, most in most cultures, fermented stuff, whether it's a beverage or food, started by accident. Mm. Something spoiled with just the right yeast in it, and it fermented and wound up better than it was before. It's just like a Reese's, and that happened by accident. It's kind of leaving mean, something in the back of your refrigerator sleep. for six months and it comes out you better. Yeah. Well, at least it comes out penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not the McCarthy part. Wine predates it all, though, doesn't it? Yeah, but that was also by accident. Yeah. In countries, in the ancient times, countries that grew a lot of grapes made grape juice. And if it's spoiled, hmm. and it's spoiled with the right yeast, you wind up with wine. Yeah. So. Wow. Interesting. Most, now, most early wines yeah. tasted strongly of goat bladder, because that's what they stored it in. Wow. They would take goat's bladders, fill it with wine. Goat and must that have got really drunk from that. The goats? Yeah. <laughs> no, but their piss was sure red. Mm. <laughs> um, now, George Washington made whiskey. Yeah. Does anybody know what his blend was? No. What his recipe was? Well, no, but actually... I'm sure you could probably find that out. There's something that he made more of than whiskey. Jefferson still makes it. He made hard apple cider. And most of the colonial distillers made more apple cider than whiskey by a long shot. Mm -hmm. If you go down to Washington's home along the Potomac there, you can actually buy the original recipe, obviously not the original, but the original recipe of the whiskey he made. They do it in limited editions. Mm. They still make it down there. I wonder what it is. I wonder what his mash bill is. <laughs> nice use of technical phraseology. Thanks. Nice one. I, I, pay attention. Face. I pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Go ahead and throw your softball. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
No, I'm just. He's not doing it. <laughs> you just had that mash bill. You just were working. You just wanted a way to. And work that in. You just you came up with the whole Washington thing just so you could work that in, didn't you? <laughs> Actually, I didn't. But you that's did. Okay. But you'd never admit it if you did. No, no, I didn't. Okay, but would you admit if you did? Yes. Maybe. So way back when you asked if we prefer, way or back. if each of us prefer uh, bourbon over wine. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong? And you said something that struck me as a little odd. Uh, well, probably you that said I thought that it was rye a little sweeter. was sweeter. I think so. Well, I don't think Typically, that. bourbon is much sweeter because corn is sweeter than rye. Rye is spicy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the almost defining cinnamon. characteristic. Almost like a cinnamon, spicy. So the, the defining characteristic of rye, typically, is its spiciness. Hmm. There might be some sweet notes because it's not 100% rye. There's always, or usually, at least some corn in it, which would sweeten it up. Or they might mix some wheat in it, which makes it even sweeter. I, I prefer bourbon because I, I do prefer corn. I like, I like the corn. And, and some, some ryes are too too spicy yes hmm. um jonathan drew actually came out a bunch of years ago when we were at the show oh yeah came out with a rye that was really oh, you tasty. tried it didn't you? it was it was very good it wasn't real real spicy it was it was very smooth and and it had some spice to it it was it was delicious but from what i understand he discontinued it there are yeah he did there are rye there are rye that are virtually bourbon because to be rye, you have to be 51% rye. Right. If the other 49% is, is corn, corn yeah. then you are like right on the edge of actually being bourbon. Yeah, because right. to be bourbon, you have to be 51% corn. corn. Right. So it's very close. Yes. Although there are high rye bourbons and there are high corn ryes. There you go. Redemption has a high rye. Yes, they do, and they call it that. Yes, they do. Redemption mm -hmm. high rye. Well, we did a. A lot of distillers have a high rye version of their bourbons. Well, we did a. Before we did a, a bourbon, a rye, and a high rye, as a as a tasting, just to compare. Yeah, just for something to do. That would be too too spicy for me. I like spice, but that would be too spicy. So, for me, since you asked the question originally. I like a ton of different bourbons. Given the right rye, I would pick a rye over a bourbon any time. And the, for me, the obvious first choice of rye, no matter what, is Colonel E.H. Taylor bottled in bond rye, mm -hmm. which to me that. is virtually the perfect expression of what rye is supposed to taste like. See, I have, and I don't know why it's called this, but uh, the Basil Hayden dark rye. It's fantastic. I love it. It's called dark rye for two reasons. They use a darker breed of rye, and they also toast it a little before they do the fermentation. Why wouldn't you toast it anyway? That sounds like it depends on what you're looking for. It's like yeah, that's true. But it I would think yields, it would give it, it a, a smokier a taste. Well, and sometimes you don't want that. You know, a blender wants yeah, what he wants. That's true. Yeah, but I like it. Well. <laughs> Start blending. It's like nuts. That's you, how you I gotta, got it. If you use nuts in food, you have to toast them. Yeah, that's true. You can't just throw raw nuts into something. Not necessarily. Uh, Depends on what you're doing. In a salad, you're not toasting them. Well, it's a salad. You're just but still, it's food. But it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a lot of different ways to use nuts. Obviously, this panel is a good example of that. <laughs> Yes, the like show makes nuts. good use of nuts. He's not wrong. I like them in candy bars. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, I shouldn't say it. I don't really don't eat that many candy bars. Oh, baby Ruth's awesome. That is good. Well, there was in one. A so you wish they you whatever. wish they made less spicy rice. That would make you happy. Well, just yeah. Well, not. I like. <laughs> they're I like out rye. there. I know. They're out there. They're yeah, like the of them. like the rye that's holding up that that TV. Uh, my, that's, my white, phone. that's white whiskey, isn't it? It's a white, I thought it was a rye. Isn't no, it's a white whiskey. Is it white whiskey? Is it white whiskey? It or? says whiskey. Does it? Oh, never mind. I was going to say, that wasn't very spicy. That's, <laughs> that's probably why. Yeah, there you go. That's probably why. <laughs> but that was white. They didn't, uh, they didn't age it. They, they didn't, didn't barrel, barrel it. it. Right. So that's why it comes out white. See? 
But they also, the same company white. also does make a white rye. Yeah, you just don't put it in barrels. Yeah, but I'm saying that that particular bottle is a whiskey, but oh. they do make a white rye. So, so are you neat, company. neat, or Oh, rocks? absolutely. No, neat. Uh, depends on the mood, honestly. One, one small rock, just enough. You know how some people like to put a drip or two of water mm -hmm. in to open the flavors I up? I do that, yeah. If you put a very small ice cube in, as it melts, you're getting the same effect, but it's also cool. I like it, one of those big ice spheres or the ice, the ice cube. balls. No, the whiskey balls. Yeah, just because it's, I, I like the, I like the flavor better when I think it opens up more when it gets a little when you get a little water in it. A little trick I learned years yeah. ago: so you put the ice in the glass first, then you fill pour the glass. It over. You know, you clear, you pour water over it, and let it sit for a few moments. The water actually acts as an insulation. You drain the water the off. Part. Drain the drain the water out of the glass, and then pour your whatever you're drinking in over top of that. The water actually forms an, an outer coating, shall we say, on the ice cubes, and it won't melt as fast. It'll not distort your flavor of the whiskey. That's interesting. Yeah, oh. I, I don't. I just put like a couple drops. Now, if I'm drinking, but I, I don't care. I drop the cubes and go see. <laughs> but I usually drink straight from the bottle, so. <laughs> so no cubes. Oh, now I know what to buy you. Yeah. I don't have to even wrap it when it's put in a brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I, we're, on the we're still working on that yeah. rum that yeah. a viewer gave us. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you, you need to try it too. Oh, yeah, I'll give it a shot. What rum is it? Flor de Cana 12. And Flor de Cana 18. I told oh, everybody about that. Oh, it's out there. It's, it's okay. out front. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a gift from a viewer who heard me talking about Flor de Cana rum a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. And he came into the store and he said, do you like the 12 or the 18 better? And I said, I, I personally prefer the 12. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you really tell the difference? And I said, in a heartbeat. He came back the next day with a bottle of 12 and a bottle of 18 and a shot glass. And he said, turn around, I'm gonna put one of these in the shot glass, you tell me which it is. Okay. I got it, like the second, the first drop hit my tongue. Mm -hmm. And he was so impressed, he said, I'm just leaving the bottles here. Ooh, really? What, uh, what's the difference? The 18 is mellower, it has less bite, but it's also less complex. Mm -hmm. The time, the extra time seemed to take away some from it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Could you do that? What? No, sir. Oh, you mean taste the difference? Yeah. No. I mean, I might be able, to, they might be able to taste different, but I couldn't tell you which was which. Mm. Okay. But you were always obviously able to do that because you've had both of them before. I've had both of them before, although I've had neither of them within the last ten years. Okay. Could you tell the difference? Could you tell the difference between a hundred dollar bottle of wine and a ten dollar bottle? It no. depends on what they are. Yes. No. One comes with a cap, and the other one gets a cork. <laughs> See, that's no, not, that's not true anymore. There, no, no, there are ten dollar okay, wines with corks, and there are a hundred dollar wines with screw tops. Yeah. I don't know that I could tell the difference. I'm not a wine. I like I like red wines from Italy. That's all I like. I'm shocked by that. I'm absolutely <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Shocked. So but you, that's it. You I'm like not a wine drinker. Sangiovese grape. I'm just, I guess. I, sure. You know what? I have no that's idea the about major wine. Italian I've been, grape. I've been liking white wines more. Just because I, I think maybe. That doesn't surprise me at all. Maybe because it's been hotter. I mean, because it's. I've been drinking a lot of wine over the summer. And I, I, I like that. Um, and. Also because it doesn't give me as much of a headache as the red with all the tannins. I suppose that's, I think that's why, but. With my South American orientation, um, the wines I like the best are Argentine Malbecs. Yeah, uh, which, very good. Which run the range, you can buy bottles for $5 that are really good. You can buy bottles for $50 that are unbelievable and you can keep going up from there. Malbecs are amazing, and that was always a grape that was grown in France for blending purposes, and somebody brought them, brought some vines to Argentina, and it came out so much better that they made it 
a varietal of its own. Mm -hmm. So when you get a Malbec from Argentina, it's all Malbec. They don't mix it with another grape. Mm. I like uh, recently because I like sweet. That's just, but yeah. I don't think any of the white. The I like it with dessert. Yeah, but the and none of them the originally really come out as a dessert. So you like port after dinner? Oh, I love port. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. I absolutely That's really love sweet. port. Port yes. is sweet, very and sweet, dense. Yes. Yeah. And it's like typically coffee. delicious. Oh, I love it. Especially in especially a vintage or a, an L, a late bottle. That's you don't like tawny. <sighs> it's okay, but it, it depends. Like if you get like a, a six gram, I'm just asking, uh, wait, six grape, six grape grams. Is that what it's called? Six grape, just six grape. I think it's, but I think it's made by grams. Is really could good. Be. Yeah, it could be. A cinnamon's good, but yeah. I like six grape. The Very first sweet. infused cigars that my company ever produced were um, infused with port. Really? Yep. How did you infuse it? Uh, Very carefully. I took a long time. I had a big uh, lucite humidor. Mm -hmm. You know, like the plexiglass-ish yeah. kind. Uh, I put multiple shot glasses of the port in the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, I let the cigars dry out a little bit, not enough to lose any oil, but just enough to lose a little surface moisture. And then I put the whole thing in the sun. Really? And what that did is warmed up the cigar, which opens it, and <coughs> evaporated the port so that the cigar could absorb it. Right. What cigar was this? Yeah, I was just going to say, what was that? It was not a commercially released cigar. Oh, it sucked? No, it didn't suck at all. It was called I private just, stock. <laughs> I just, no, I just produced it locally at a very small scale. Hmm. So it was never really launched as a brand. I called it El Infusador. <laughs> El Infusador. <Wow>. El Infusador. <laughs> El Infusador. El Infusador. What was the Did cigar you had that was... Was it was it Christmas blend or something? No. I or, never all right, there was one that did you just have one that had pipe tobacco in it? Yeah. Yes, I did. That's S maybe that's S. Holmes. S. Holmes. That's it. Yeah. That's what it reminded me. Of. I thought it <laughs> tasted like Christmas. You're always right on the edge, are you? Of uh, uh, of trademark. Trademark. Infringement. <laughs> yes, always. I, I, you know, it was pronounced Sholmes. I <laughs> I <laughs> have spent my life living on the brink. That's just I'm surprised, not I'm surprised the, the Beethoven family didn't come after you. No, that's pub, Beethoven is public domain. Oh, uh, okay. And it was Beethoven. Uh, okay. Somebody else is making a Beethoven cigar now. I don't know who. Really? And it doesn't look anything like mine, and it certainly know. doesn't taste anything like mine. Well, there was the Stradivarius for a while. That was Macanudo. <laughs> What's it? I, I didn't know it was Macanudo. I knew Macanudo, it was general. The Macanudo Stradivarius. That was back in the early, late aughts, like eight, oh, like eight nine. or nine, yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. And they came, uh, they were like twenty some dollars a piece back for then. Back then for a Macanudo. For a Macanudo. Jesus. Yeah. That's why you don't hear about it much anymore. Yeah, that's a good I reason. Mean, a, a Stradivarius uh, Macanudo is kind of like saying a Stradivarius banjo. <laughs> I like a banjo. What's wrong with banjo? What's wrong with banjos? Well, they're not as sophisticated or or intense as a violin. That's true. What about an electric guitar? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Stradivarius electric guitar. I don't think there was electricity when Stradivarius was around. Probably not. Un unless he, well, you know, ran a kite up with they, a key they, on they, the end. They changed. They changed the name to Strata from Stradivarius to Stratocaster. Uh -huh. See, it was very close. Yeah, that's good. Let's see what you started. Me, I don't remember doing anything. Yeah, I don't. Do we want to express some further opinions about well, the cigar for our no. viewing audience? Well, we have to get our final review and the numbers on it. Well, that would be a way to yes. express further opinions. Yes, sure. Again, Moose. Nine. For our I mean, the tastes are subtle. Wonderful made cigar, burns great. Uh, I can't wait to enjoy one with a good glass of bourbon. 
Mm -hmm. And which one would you choose? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> but hey. you. Uh, wow, that's that was uh, that was impressive. I, I, w I would uh, probably pair it with My a uh, do that? <laughs> Jack Daniels triple mash. Triple mash. Yeah, I've never nice. had that. Thought you just recently Rye had corn that. and wheat. No, I had the uh, bonded. Bonded, okay. All right. No, triple mash is, I think would work well. That bonded was good. Bonded. Yeah. bonded. Good stuff. Yeah. Paul. So I found a little bit of transition. Uh, Creaminess, which you noticed early, Scott, I think came up some in the back half. Mm -hmm. um, a tiny, tiny bit of pepper, but really tiny. Just enough to get the tip of your tongue. And and still earthiness and minerality predominate. But a great creamy mouthfeel to it. Scott? I get, the, I get what you said about the vegetal and the also you said I thought you mentioned it, the mineral. Oh, wait. Did I, say, I did say it. You said the, I meant the earthy. The vegetable, I just did get the mineral. And the creaminess is still there. And, the, and I'm getting a little bit of, I mean, maybe that's what making me sneeze, is a little bit of spiciness or pepperness. Um, you ruined it. Of the, I've probably had six of these. This is probably the most enjoyable. Um, I'll go as far as giving an 8.5. Can't do it like Paul. Um, I didn't do it. I didn't give her a number. Oh, what's your number? No, no, no. Yeah. I'd go with most since we have said nine. And you give it an 8.5? I give it an 8.5. Okay. Um, I, you, I think you're right. It, the creaminess came in the back half of the cigar. Uh, and it coats the entire palate. Even the roof of my, mm -hmm. my mouth is getting the creaminess of it. Uh, it still get the, gets the... Um, the earthiness, and now on the back end, I'm also getting the sweetness, which is very enjoyable. It's on the finish. Yes, on the finish. That's what I meant to say. The back end finish, same thing. Pretty much. I know, but I love correcting. Uh, I know you do. It's <laughs> what and, I live for. And again, I I love retrohaling this cigar. The retrohale is tremendous it in this cigar. Sneeze. It's delicious. I, I see that, but every cigar makes you sneeze. No, wait, yeah, you know what? The last, last two weeks, he's been okay with that. Yeah. He hasn't sneezed much. I think there's a fair amount of uh, seco in this cigar because I, I feel it drying out. To me, my, my mouth. mouth is dry, yeah. So you might want to do a bunch of retro hells and the seco will dry out your nose. Dr. Paul. Okay. Um, Start I, immediately. I, I, okay. I give. I give this a little. I like this a little bit more than you guys. I give it a nine two five. I think it's. I think it's a very good cigar. Do so. we know what it costs? And then you're the one who picked it out of the box. You didn't yeah, see but it. when I pick a cigar out of a box, it's, I, I think never it's like look at the price. It's between. T I think it's between nine fifty and eleven somewhere. Oh, around okay. There. So it's in the sweet spot. So, yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, oh, everyone. Yes. Um, happy Thanksgiving. And Enjoy we'll your Black families. Friday. Black Friday. Turkey bowling. Yeah. Stay classy. Yeah. All kinds them. of all kinds of promotions at uh, Quaker Town. We'll see. They'll figure something out. Come up and find and out. And in the meantime, smoke often and smoke happy. Ciao for and now, uh, everybody. Ciao for now, everybody. Like <laughs> <Life's> too short, <laughs> smoke cheap cigars. <laughs>